not easy to tackle transformation in mining or in any industry. And today's guest on Change Itself is part of an organization that tackles it head on. Charles Nambeze, VP of Business Development and Commercialization at SEMI, joins Gus and Eric to discuss transformation in an organization, a recently announced $40 million in federal funding for mining innovation, and much more. Change Itself starts now. Welcome everybody to episode three of Change Itself. Uh, it's awesome that we were already on the third episode. Thank you everybody for watching. Uh, if everybody wants to know which episodes are coming up, please go ahead and hit subscribe on our YouTube page. You'll see the links below. And uh, yeah, we'll keep this moving, moving forward, which is pretty exciting. We're here today with Eric Demers. And uh, hello, Gus Miner, right on. Thanks for joining us, Eric. Here we are with the third episode already. Isn't that, in the, isn't that crazy? Yeah, right on. Didn't think we'd make it this far, but we're here. Yeah, right on. So it seems like uh, we've had some good traction so far, and we're here together uh, with a, uh, a new guest again this week. So we're pretty excited to introduce our new guest. Our, uh, our main topic today is going to be talking about transform transformations versus change, which should be a, a very enlightening conversation uh, between the three of us. Um, how, what's been going on uh, in the, you know, since our last episode, Eric? Anything you want to share with, uh, with us now? Yeah, just uh, one of the things that uh, seems to be happening and we're seeing around the, maybe not even just the, the mining industry, we're just being more present to, uh, you know, fatal accidents in the workplace. So I saw a post you, you put out this morning with the 2.3 million um, deaths in the last year as a result of workplace injuries. So, um, you know, it, it's humbling and things are still happening and incidents have or are still happening. Um, so, I, you know, wouldn't mind if we took a moment to reflect on that and uh, think of, uh, you know, people that you know, and people that are affected. It's not just the, the person itself themselves, it's their family, their community, their coworkers, and it's got a massive impact. Um, so just wanted to share with that. And, you know, thanks. Thanks a lot for sharing that, Eric. I know that uh, it's it's always something that we 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 feel uh, as a localized uh, event when something happens, uh, whether it's from a loved one or someone in the community or someone that we work with. When we really start looking at the numbers at scale, um, it's alarming, right? It's alarming, and and. And ultimately, then you you start thinking, you know, what can what can we do, and and. Some of the conversations that I've passed and I've had in a few in the past few days have been, you know, around the fact that you know we have a lot of time and energy and and budget available to put things to as a reaction to a uh, to a loss, uh, and to to try to make uh, some transformation so some change happens so we can start preventing uh, or keep working on prevention. Uh, but you know, it's 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 great that we're doing that after the fact. Uh, what, you know, what kind of energy could be put? I mean, I know that for myself, when things occur, you think about, oh, shoot, if I would have just done this, or if I would have just listened to that, or if I would have just spoke up, we could have avoided that. And it's, uh, and it's not only, you know, having to mourn the losses that we have in the workplace uh, with those events, but it's also mourning the what could have been within many different individuals. And, you know, that's, that's another piece, right? We, we have to live with, uh, with the outcomes uh, of the guilt that we have with ourselves. So we've had a lot of conversations internally here about, you know, continuing to work. We talk about um, a lot of the core values that we, you know, that we try to talk, that we try to instill and to, to carry forward in our, not only in our family lives, but in our work lives, when we talk about uh, courage, you know, humility, integrity, and, and ultimately what I came down to is that it's not just a, uh, a core value that you say that, you know, this is what I believe in. It's also a developed skill. Uh, you know, it's not easy to keep your promise. It's not easy to stop something when you know that it's not right. It's not easy to have the courage to, to bring somebody, um, to, you know, to talk to somebody, talk somebody out of something that they're committed of doing for themselves. Uh, there, there's a lot of work to be done there. And, and uh, it's, um, it's going to be interesting how we tackle things as an industry. And I think overall, this would be a great opportunity to also introduce our guest this week, uh, Charles Neabizi from SEMI. 
Uh, he's he's up to uh, him and the semi team are up to some fantastic things. Welcome on the show, uh, Charles. Thank you, Gus. Uh, thanks for having me. And uh, hello, Eric. Nice to meet you, Charles. Yeah, nice to meet you as well. Yeah. So based on a conversation that we started, um, you've got some pretty uh, interesting announcements and pretty exciting news for uh, for everyone with uh, the, the the recent uh, public announcement of uh, of uh, a new milestone in your journey which uh, a lot of it has to do with safety and, and transformations in the mining industry. So if you want to, can you share a little bit about it, about that? Yeah, one? for sure. For sure. Again, thank you so much for having me on, uh, on, on, on this uh, podcast. And uh, uh, Gus, look, you know, I look, you're a thought leader and, and I know, I, I know that, you know, your intentions are in the right place. And I know that, you know, this, uh, this, this podcast is going to impact many people's lives in, in, in more significant ways than we're going to even measure. Right. So, um, my role at SEMI is uh, SEMI, which is the Center for Excellence in Mining Innovation. I'm the Vice President, Business Development and Commercialization. And, uh, you know, we recently got awarded uh, a $40 million federal funding um, opportunity uh, that we've been working on for the past two years. And uh, what, what this opportunity allows to happen is it allows technical projects that allow us to push the envelope forward in how innovations are being adopted by the mining industry, not only the Canadian mining industry, but the global mining industry. Uh, so it's a huge opportunity to, to find that seed capital and help that uh, will accelerate the commercial adoption of technologies. Then the other big part of this initiative is uh, the network development activities. We really want to support activities that support innovation within an organization, within the ecosystem, and also want to you know, build the capacity of, of the ecosystem to do what it's already doing great, but to do it even better. You know, you, know, you talk about transformation and change. You know, we really are looking to transform the industry and not just to change it. So Charles, for you, what, what's, what's the difference between transformation and change? How would you differentiate both of them? Yeah, thanks for the thanks question, Eric. You know, like, look, I'm um, my dad has taught me a long time ago that you know when you when you're reading something and you come across a word you don't understand, he he's, he told me go look in the dictionary, right? So, you know, I I, I did that actually, guys. Yesterday I did that today. I, I I looked at the dictionary and and you know the funny thing is you know transformation from a dictionary definition is is just like you know bigger change. You know that's kind of what they say. It's kind of bigger change, right? And 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 look when you look at a transformation from sort of, sort of maybe the mathematical side of things. It's just a different way of doing something to get the same value, right? So for mathematically, transformation is do something different, same value. But I think what we want to talk about when we say transformation is different actions, more value or different value, right? So now you're talking about a true transformation. And I think, you know, within organizations, for example, I think to, to change may actually just mean you change how you do things, but you get the same value. Right, you, you. It's like you know. It's like one plus x as opposed to one plus x plus y, but same value, right? Mm -hmm. So I think transformation has to have a different value or or a significant change in how the work is being approached. But I think given that you know we work within business context most of the time, we are always looking to to get that additional value and not just change how we achieve at this. Uh, the same value. Uh, and again, look, even even from a spiritual standpoint, you know, somebody can say, well you'd be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's like, what, what does that mean, right? Uh, it's, it's a whole different mindset, a whole different way of, of looking at things. So I think, I think, you know, it's just maybe the measure of the extent of the transformation or the change where we call transformation. So maybe we need to decide right now, you know, how much change do we call transformation? Is it 50% change or 100% change? So. Yeah, I look at it from, uh, sorry, Gus. I look at it from, uh, like, I can hear it in what you're saying and it's very similar. Whereas like uh, change is like a really slow evolution to doing something different, better, but with the same kind of outcome, if you will. And we're like transformation for me is like going to look at and explore, you know, and question myself on what I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like I can go look at a book, I can go read up on, I don't know, you name it, could be artificial intelligence. I'll know about artificial intelligence, but it doesn't open the door for me with what's possible with artificial intelligence. So it's just looking at, you know, the things that I like, I don't know that I, I don't know. And that's where I find it most impactful. And I like to question myself and go look at that. So like, if we loop back to some of your work, is there anything out there that you see that's like 
something that you've come across that you just didn't know that you didn't know about that? Yeah, I mean, there's there is a couple of things that I just didn't know. I didn't know, and 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 I'll, I'll point to maybe one one example. You know, one example was, you know, look, we all know that, you know, the something called GPS, right? Like this, the GPS uses satellites, kind of tell you where you are in space and time. And I came across a technology which uses gravity and the fact that the Earth's rotation is is at a certain speed wherever you are in space and time, and and, and that the gravitational pull is, is, is unique to every location on the planet. And, and you can actually use gravity as, as a GPS, but here's, here's, here's a beautiful thing. This works underground. So this technology can actually tell you where you are in space and time underground. It's like an underground GPS that also works on the surface. And I was like, wow, that's completely different. And, and Eric, I think you're right. You know, it's, it's getting that information that you didn't have before, you know, that then causes you to have that aha moment. Uh, you know, what you don't know, you don't know, uh, can, can be trans trans transformative for sure. That one just blew my mind. I'd never heard of that before. That's awesome. It is really cool. It is yeah. really cool. Yeah, because we talk a lot about how the conditions are so different underground uh, than they are on surface. And, and locationing has been brought to, you know, different infrastructures to find a way to, to find positioning underground in different ways because you don't have that GPS system. So now that you're, you're saying that there's actually a, two, a way to have a GPS system follow you on surface as well as underground as one cohesive uh, system, that's amazing. It's, it, 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 and you're right. I mean, I think, I think what's amazing is it's too good to be true, right? That's... That's why it's so amazing, right? It's like, well, it's too good to be true. And, you know, at same, we come across a lot of technologies that are too good to be true. You know, you know for example, when you start talking about, you know, gold extraction without using cyanide or mercury, you know, some people don't even believe it's true, right? Whereas it's, it's already happening, right? And, and so there are things like that, you know, like measuring, you know, water, quant water, water quality in real time. You know, and, and and it's things that are too good to be true. And I think, you know, Eric, to speak to what you're talking about, that whole new way of looking at things uh, with new information. Uh, I think transformation is, is very embedded in that. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think for me as well, when I, when I, when I think about transformation versus uh, incremental change or, or different change initiatives, is that a change will impact It'll, you know, it'll be it'll be something that you'll put in in particular to have a significant outcome of X, right? And transformation to me is all of those different changes that give you an X result that are aligned for a, a much greater output. Mm -hmm. so, so you would do, you would have multiple things that you're changing for the greater outcome, which would be transformational. Because we see it a lot of times where, you know, this is not the output we expect, we're gonna change this. And mm -hmm. then this is not the output we expect, we're gonna go change this. And what we talked to Eric and I a few days ago was all of those changes that occur are actually aligning the Swiss cheese pattern perfectly for a failure mm -hmm. or a catastrophic event. I mean, it could line up as well. They could line up very well for a, a, a transformation that you never anticipated. It could happen that way as well. But you know, no different than when you have uh, things that are happening on the stock market or things like that where all of these different impacts are happening at once, which creates the perfect storm for either uh, a transformational success or uh, a substantial uh, collapse, right? And, and we think about that in, in the sense of a workplace where individually all those initiatives made sense. And individually all those initiatives might be succeeding uh, to a certain extent, but together as a group, mm. it's not great. Mm. Uh, so mm. that's how I kind of saw the difference between uh, things that you're doing to achieve uh, a transformation within your organization or your, your structure uh, versus a uh, a specific change initiative, right? Have you guys yeah. ever been part of like a transformational change versus like a air quotes, I guess, if you will, like a, a change initiative? Like, what's what's that been like? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll give you an example of what I think I've experienced as transformational. When I first started working with the Center for Excellence in My Innovation, you know, we were really close to the mid. 
to low TRL scale, uh, which, which meant that you know, the technologies we're looking at were sort of more recent research outcomes as opposed to an outcome that had kind of gone beyond research and had now gone to that lab scale. And so, so but as time moved forward since 2008 and 12, you know, we, we've, we've now moved over to the, the late stage TRL levels that where, where, you know, what that means is that uh, it's more demonstration project ready to go into an operational setting, right? And to be able to shift an organization from sort of, you know, looking at one aspect of the market to another aspect of the market is quite transformational because you start to speak a different language, right? And, and which means your culture has to change, right? You're no longer speaking, you know, the language that is sort of, sort of co consistent with someone who's trying to perfect a, a research outcome. And, but now you're saying, you know what, let's take that research outcome and actually look at its commercial application. And I think that's very transformational in, in, cause it's, it's a change, right? It's like a whole change. Um, and, 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 and guys, just to, to say, to just add on something you said earlier on, we also, I view innovation, you know, as, as point solutions that are brought together in, in a system, right? So in other words, yes, they're individual solutions, but they're all point solutions, but together, you know, the whole idea of the sum, sum of, the, of, the, of the whole is greater than some of the parts, right? It's, so you kind of get one plus one equals 20, right? You know, as opposed to one plus one equals two. And, and, and I really believe that, you know, transformation is when you can do that, right? So whenever you can make one plus one equal to three, you got transformation, right? As long as it's equal to two, it's maybe it's change, it, it, but it's not transformational change. Every worker deserves to go home safely at the end of the day. Book a demo with Sophie to discover how their groundbreaking EHS management software empowers workers to proactively avoid hazards and how organizations like yours can cultivate a stronger work culture. Visit them at sophie.com to learn more. Technica Mining is a premier underground mining and construction contractor. They stand for delivering quality project work on time and on budget through innovative thinking. Their excellent safety record, experienced workforce, and large equipment fleet will guarantee the timely completion of all your project needs. Trusted by the world's leading mining companies, Technica Mining has over 20 years of experience in mine construction, development, and production. Contact Technica Mining to take your next mining project to the next level. Learn more at technicamining.com. Change Itself is produced by Crownsman, the voice of industry. Check out more, including the Crownsman Show, Mining Now, Crownsman Energy, and Crownsman Egg at crownsman.com. We, we've had, well, I know I've recently had a lot of conversations around systems and, and what would be the next, the next frontier in breaking through um, you know, di different results, right? Because we, I mean, where, where I stand, I mean, I've got a lot of different people reaching out to me for, to use the same tool in many, many different ways. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and for them, uh, those impacts are transformational within their organization because that is specifically the, you know, the desired result that they're chasing. So uh, just because you built a, a system or a tool in a certain way, doesn't mean that that's the only way that it serves a use for, mm -hmm. uh, for people that are using it. So, you know, <clears throat> I was thinking about that where some people actually, it, it, it's funny because I, it, this is a conversation that uh, struck a chord with me where uh, some people say, you know, we don't need another system or we don't need systems to be better. Uh, it, it, there's got to be something else. Uh, but in the same way, they're going to ask for an output from you that comes directly from a system, right? And, yeah. and systems don't necessarily have to be uh, like I view systems in a much different way where it's not a computer, it's not a software, it's not a technology, it's not an automation process, um, it's not, um, those are all things that can, that you can build systems with, and it's a system that will enhance more systems, I get that, but even things like preparing your clothes the night before, and they're sitting at the end of your, at the end of your bed for the morning, that's a system. It's a system that you built for yourself to be successful for the day that's coming up. Mm -hmm. So you get up, you don't have to think about what you're going to wear. You put on your clothes and then away you go. And when you, when you start taking a look at all of these micro systems mm -hmm. that you follow through the day, you start to realize that systems are, you know, they're much, much bigger than anybody anticipates. Uh, because everybody finds a way to be successful with the systems of their chewing, their choosing. Yeah. And that systems can, it's systems that create 
habits. Mm -hmm. Now, a system that's not put together properly will create unfavorable habits, which will then have to be broken, which is all, it's a bigger conversation there as well. Uh, but, you know, a well-formulated system can create habits that enable you to even tackle on bigger, bigger systems, you know. Um, Eric and I had this conversation, so I'm about to move uh, in the next, uh, you know, five to six weeks, uh, which, uh, you know, I hate moving. It's terrible. Uh, I don't recommend it for anyone. I, 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 I'm just not a fan of it. Mm -hmm. However, it's something that needs to happen. And when you look at it from a, uh, from a task standpoint, it's a mountain of a task, um, especially when you got a family and dogs and everything else, like it's a big task. However, the way that, you know, the way that we broke it down in our home is we said, you know what, let's just do this. Let's pack two to four boxes per day for the next six weeks. Yeah. And then we've broken it down into micro tasks. Uh -huh. And what we did is we said, we're going to do this task between five o'clock and six 30 every night. So now we've actually systemized our micro task. And when we look, when we did the math and we, when we looked at it, by the time we get to the week where we're about to move, we don't have to worry about any of that. It's basically just put it in the truck and then go. Right? Yeah. And because exactly. I, I really started thinking about transformational um, movements that you can have within an organization. And a lot of times we look at different things that we have to do as a huge mountain to overcome. Right. Right on. Now, as a group, what if we just broke it down into small pieces? And yeah. and when you look at a software package, for example, a lot of software packages these days have become very, very complex um, and, and very full, rich of features. So if you just say, you know what, we're going to have this this amazing transformation within our company. Here's this package. Let's yeah. all go gangbusters and implement all of these different modules and these, these different features you're going to have a heck of a time. That's a massive journey that's almost unsurmountable. And it's almost, you know, uh, it almost equates to uncertain failure or, or certain failure uh, at this point. But if you say, you know what, today, we're just going to log in. We just want everybody to just log in. And then that's your task for today. And we'll get really good at just logging in, right? And now we're going to take care of the problem of what's my password and how do we get there, right? As an example, and then the next day, it's you know what we're going to open this one section, and we're going to do we're going to work in this one section, and that's what we're going to master this over the next five days. And when that's you a, break it down like that, like yeah, your journey might be three years, the same as it yeah. would have been. However, yeah. at the end of the three years, you're looking at a full transformation on how the the language is occurring yeah. in the in the day, how you're leveraging the tools that you've mastered. Uh, where, whereas the other way around of just saying, here's everything, let's just go nuts and then find value in it the way that we see fit. Three years from now, we still don't have alignment. We may not have yeah. full adoption and we're still having the same conversations as they want. I know. And, and those are the things that kind of like, you know, I simmer on all the time because there's, uh, you know, systems, so, systems will set you free. I've always said it like, you know, systems and processes will set you free. Uh, not only from a uh, a liability or a legal standpoint, but mostly from a, a success standpoint, you know, that That's you build those things, things to be successful. One of the things Charles said earlier around, like that really hit me around transformation was like the piece around language. Like when you went from like one market segment to another and you just got to change your language, that one hit home because when we're talking about change initiatives or any change initiatives I've been involved yeah. with. Yeah. There's a little bit of the language, but maybe not focused there enough. And like, You've actually got to transform your mindset and your language and how you speak about these things. And I mean, you touched about it. The, the second you said the word system, I like cringed, right? Because it sometimes got a, like a, a, it's got a bad rap, if you will. But it, at the end of the day, you, like you explained that it's nothing, nothing difficult and it's actually there to benefit you. But yeah, I don't know. My experience with the word system has been, you know, at times people fear it. Yeah. If I can just maybe, you know, add to what uh, both of you were saying around around systems, you know, in my work, okay, in my work, you know, we, we have recognized that what, what a change in one part of the system can cause problems in another part of the system. And I think that's what you're kind of talking about that, how, you know, as you know, you think it's a, it's a great change you're, you're implementing, but you don't realize that you're actually creating the perfect storm for a disaster, right? And so, so because of that level of thinking, you know, of looking at a system-wide approach, you know, it's good to, to try and envision impact, you know, down the line, right? So I, I always talk about upstream and downstream, right? Okay, well, 
okay, sure, you want to make a change here today, but how does it impact downstream and upstream, right? I, I often say to people, you know, if you wanted to change the tires that you use on a vehicle underground, did you talk to procurement, for example, right? I mean, yeah, you're, yeah, you want to change the tires, but have you spoken to the whole chain of supply chain about getting that new tire because it's going to cause a lot of problems, right? And and you might not even know that you're tied into that tire by some other arrangement, right? So, so I think I think I think change within a system it has to be thought out carefully, right? And then the other piece, that, uh, Gus, that I wanted to to touch on was, you know, in Africa, there's a saying that says uh, the best way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. Right. And I uh, know that I eat elephants or anything like that. But 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 certainly, you know what? I think change is like that. Right. You talk about moving. Right. Um, but then again, you know, you talk about you know, even weight training, you know, talk about weight training, you know, Gus and all about that more than I, 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 I can know about that um, uh, in muscle building. If you start off with a, with a smaller weights and you sort of build up your muscle, you know, in time you can get tougher. Right. So in the workplace, what I find is if you don't have the same approach of saying, OK, you know what? Here's a little bite, and here's a bigger bite, and then here's a bigger bite. Now, if if you show up on the day when I'm on the tenth bite, you're gonna be like, "Wow, transformation!" Right? Uh, in in same way, you know, with with Highway 69 in and double aiming it. If you don't go down that highway for a good four five months, when you end up driving there, you're like, "Wow, what happened?" Right? <laughs> transformation, right? But yeah. to the workers on the road, it's not a transformation. For them, it's like daily grind, right? It's like, wow, boy, daily grind. But to me, the guy who hasn't been on Highway 69 for a couple of months, it's like, wow, big change, right? So so I always say maybe transformation is in the eye of the beholder, right? Depends, you know, who, who's looking at the transformation. For some people, it's not a big deal. <laughs> what you think is a transformation? Whereas some people think they've moved a mountain an inch when it's a small change for someone else. That's that's some awesome insight, Charles. Like that, uh, I'll use blow my mind again, but blew my mind. Like I, it's in the eye of the beholder. It's all in your perspective. It could be all in your perspective of of where you're at. Because even with social media and the, the way things are, you, you you don't see the journey. You just see the the result. And so it, it's easy to get lost in that. Like I just want the result piece. Yeah, so that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe 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 that's why you know maybe success happens to those who are willing to to delay gratification, right? Because you know you recognize that that change is not going to happen overnight, right? That it's going to take time, right? In the same, if you want to accumulate anything of value, right, you have to sort of be patient enough to see it through, and and that is allowing the change to happen, right? Uh, you know, talk about transformation recently. You know, I don't know about you guys, but my oak trees outside were attacked by these worms over the last couple of months. And now there's butterflies. It's like, well, what happened, right? <laughs> transformation. Uh, but I witnessed it happening, right? So for me, it was the transformation. It was like a gradual process of seeing leaves broken down yeah. and chewed up, the trees looking like they're about to die. But now that the butterflies have come out, or the moths, not butterflies, it's a, it's a transformation there as well. Um, on the topic of technology, so it's something we tend to talk about on this podcast. Charles, anything, I know you talked about earlier, the uh, underground, like the GPS will work, work underground. Yeah. Are there any other like really interesting, sharp technologies you've come across in the- Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, yeah, that's, that's you asking the wrong guy that question. I'll talk all day about that now. Um, but, but look, I think, you know, safety is, is something that can be guaranteed, um, you know, I, and I think you can build, you know, tools, that are intrinsically safe, not not just intrinsically safe from blowing up, because that's what that's what, that's what that really means, right? Is that intrinsically safe is it, it it won't cause a fire underground or something like that, right? It won't cause a problem, but but really it's safety, right? Intrinsically safe from a safety standpoint is possible. We're seeing a lot of automation coming in into the mining industry, and and you know before you know there's a lot of that talk about tele remote, right? Tele remote is person is still involved in doing something, right? Whereas with, with automation and autonomous, you sort of remove the person 100% from, from the system, right? A lot of machine to machine is, 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 is happening in mining now. And, and the inclusion, the involvement of, or the, the, the integration of, of AI and machine learning is really creating you know, an industry in a way where any of those environments that could have brought a human being to, to risk you know, are, are completely being de-risked. 100%, right? Uh, you know, people don't need to be at the face anymore. They don't have to be, right? The technology is there. You know, we might not have adopted it, but it's available. You know, to, it's not may not be as fast as it should be, but it's still available. Um, you know, with what's happening with technologies like LiDAR, 
you know, being able to see things better, you know, from a distance and being really able to measure what you're looking at. I think all those technologies are making a huge difference. Um, uh, look, mining being, you know, a, a cyclical, a cycle, right? There's innovation happening in every aspect of it. You know, there are things happening in the exploration side you know, where we can look deeper, you know, at what's underground. And there are things happening at the mind design level. There are things happening at the, you know, mind development level and yet along the operations, mineral processing, you know, mind rehabilitation, mind closure. So it really is a spectrum of, of innovations happening under all those areas. And it's hard for me to pinpoint any one of them. You know, I don't want to pick any favorites or anything uh, like, like that. But, but that's what we're seeing is happening. And then another trend we're seeing is, there's a, 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 an influx of, of innovations from other sectors that wants to make its way into the mining sector uh, from other sectors. And that's gonna cause a lot of change to happen very fast in, in the mining sector. And, and you know, the resistance to change mechanisms you know, that are built into habits, like what Gus was talking about, uh, will, will need to be, to, to be you know, carefully you know, uh, approached uh, so that you know, we, you inform and 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 reduce the barrier to the barriers to entry. Yeah, no, it's it's interesting. I mean, because you know, speaking of different industries, I mean, having brought up within a technology industry, I wake up every morning to change. I wake mm -hmm. up every morning to guess what? You used to do it this way. As of today, it's this way because who knows? Maybe Microsoft released a new version of Windows. Maybe there's been a huge update that you know, completely transformed how you approach things. Maybe there's a new troubleshooting tool. Uh, in technology, change is, is not even a word, really. It, it's just, you know, we, we just call it adapting and pivoting and just keep moving forward. Uh, yeah. And then you go to different industries and you say, hey, can you just use a red book instead of a blue book? Well, hold on here. Um, I'm so used to using a, a blue book. Like, why do you want yeah. me to change it to a, a red book? So there's a very, very big gap uh, between all of the different industries that we can think of when it comes to adopting and, and absorbing uh, change. So, so having all of these uh, very quickly progressing um, innovations and, and movements within a mining industry, uh, I think is a very positive thing. Like, yeah, it's going to be, we're going to go through moments of chaos. Uh, th there's no doubt about it. And uh, there's going to be moments of chaos where things will be ripped out and pushed in. Uh, but, you know, I'm looking forward to the day where we're talking about the mining industry as one of the most adaptable uh, oh, yes. industries on the planet, right? Where it's yeah. like, yeah, five years ago we were mining this way. Now we're mining this way. So what? Let's keep moving forward, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and 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 what's nice is that you know, like the more and more conversations that I'm having with uh, different layers of uh, organizations, they're not only like I noticed a, a difference between in that like within the last two years, uh, where a lot of the workforce has been resistant uh, to a lot of this change to now seeing that. Hey, you know what? I'm no longer exposing myself. I'm not concerned that this machine or this process will replace my job. It just means that my job is going to be different now. And I'm not exposing myself every single day. How awesome is that? You know? So yeah. I feel like that conversation is going in the right direction to create yes. that climate for true adoption and true transformation in the industry. So it's exciting, super exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, I agree with that. And, and, and look, I think, you know, just to be fair, you know, when anybody says mining, for example, right? I mean, you almost have to ask the qualifying question: What do you mean, right? Yeah. Uh, because the mining industry is, you know, it's 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 salty, right? The mining industry is 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 it's it's it's, it's semi, it's 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 valley, but guess what? It's also Janatech, you know. It's also you know FVT, right? It's also you know all these other organizations that that form part of the industry, and everybody's offering something different. You know, we, we need that 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 brain. You know that's that 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 sort of coordinates how the industry functions uh, because if you don't have that, uh, it becomes too complex, right? And and then not any one person has it in their brain or their intelligence to coordinate it all, right? So you almost need that artificial piece to come in and step in and help us out. And I think Sophie with software, right? I think you're on the right track in being able to already have you know, a digital medium for some of that. And I think that will help facilitate change uh, because as complexity keeps increasing, uh, you know, especially with, 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 with technology and how it's growing, uh, it's gonna be very difficult uh, soon for anyone to understand all the options available for them, you know, to do anything, right? Whereas, you know, with, with the, the technology interfaces, I think it's gonna really help us to accelerate change. And I think what Elon Musk is doing with uh, Neuralink, you know, people have mixed, feelings about becoming bogs or becoming, you know, 
um, half machine. Uh, but, 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 but suddenly, I think, you know, that things like that accelerate change, right? Because, yes. you know, because now you can, you can have all the information you need to make the decision right now, right? Um, uh, you know, I've often wondered, you know, how hard is it? I wish my glasses were just built in with a, a temperature thing already. And not, not, not to say it's a Google Glass, but the fact that I need the information now, if I add it now, then I can make a decision sooner. So I think there's, there's something there. Maybe, maybe you guys can tell me about that. Is, is mm-hmm. there a, a correlation between uh, maybe knowledge and change? Like what, what's the correlation between knowledge and change? Well, I think Sorry, you man. learn, right? Like with information you're learning mm-hmm. and the more you know, the better you're planning and the better you're planning, the better you're executing. So I think there's a, a downstream correlation for sure. It's not like a direct correlation, but I think that it's a, uh, it's a, it's a downstream correlation. Mm. But, uh, you know, we talked about different industries and, and one of the things that I want to touch on today was like, you know, the differences between two flight patterns. So we just witnessed, you know, two, two billionaires get shot up into outer space, uh, you mm. know, uh, recently. Two very, very different approaches. Yeah. Right? Uh, one, you know, one that came in from, uh, from a, di- you know, from a different industry than, you know, they're not coming from a rocket industry. You know, when you're looking at Virgin, they're not coming from a rocket industry. So what do they do? They lean on what they do best and they fly planes. So they had a plane as, you know, escalate to a certain height. And then yep. from there, the, it, it launched the, uh, the component that would go into outer space. And I thought that was like, I never even imagined that that was going to be a possibility that you can actually get to a certain elevation the same way as we take a flight to go to different cities and then, and then go from there. Um, I found that flight fascinating on, on the approach that they took. Yes. Right. Um, and then you've got, you know, the typical way with, uh, with uh, Bezos going up with uh, a rocket, right? Like, I mean, every time I thought about space travel, I thought a rocket takes off from the ground and then that's just how it is. So really cool uh, to see the differences between the two approaches and the actual outcomes. I had the opposite. And also the experience, you know, I had an, an opposite kind of like uh, way it occurred to me it was like the space shuttles we see nowadays look like airplanes, like the American, you know, their the Challenger, their shuttle looks like an airplane, right? With the giant booster inside of it. And so when I saw the, the Virgin Galactic one go up, I was like, okay, yeah, uh, makes a lot of sense. I thought it was really cool that they were able to land it in the way in which they did it. And that was, yeah. it was phenomenal. But then when I saw them take off in the other rocket and I was like, wow, like I didn't actually think that it would be like a rocket with nobody operating it from inside the rocket. Right. I was like, that blew my mind. Yeah. Yeah. People sit and join the ride and then up they go. And then the rocket comes back down, you know, to earth lands and then the capsule comes down and essentially nobody has to do anything. I thought it was just like unreal. Yeah, and, and and I mean like, look, I'm I'm a big fan as well of of what's been happening, you know, in the race to open up space, you know, for for commercial purposes like tourism, for example. Um, and and but you know, the one thing that Bezos said that I really liked was he said, you know, if we can open up space resources, we can then enable you know the heavy industries uh, to be outside of the earth, right? To be to be to be to be done in space. And I thought that was you know that was a good linkage. And I and I think. You know everything we're talking about with the industry is like, well, how do we exist in an industry that's off off planet, right? Because right now we're kind of talking about industry in the context of what we're doing here on the planet. You know how how do you how do you monitor an industry where human safety is no longer a, a, an issue, right? Because you kind of built it out of the system, right? You built out accident out, out of the system, and I think that's kind of where the future is going. And it's fascinating to see that happening in our, in, our, in our lifetime. I mean, the work that SpaceX has been doing in reducing the cost of bringing a payload into space is phenomenal, right? And, and but the thing is, there's some, those technologies have applications to what we're doing here. Uh, you know, someone told me that, um, they, they told me that the mining industry has a good safety record, but the space industry has a higher safety record. I was like, wow, okay, that's interesting. You know, I wonder how, you know, they measured that, right? And I wonder how the space industry sort of came to that conclusion. That they they had a better safety record than, than 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 the mining. Right on. Well, hey Charles, I really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. So thank you. it's uh it's it was an amazing conversation which I anticipated and I knew you, I knew it was gonna you were gonna deliver. Uh, it's always an interesting time to spend with you. Uh, and Eric, thanks a lot. Episode three thank you. in the books.
Right, guys, I just want to thank you for, for the opportunity and, uh, you know, looking forward to, to the success of this podcast and uh, continue to support it in any way that we can. No, well, thank you, Charles. It was uh, quite enlightening. I really appreciated that. Thanks, Gus. Sure thing. Right on. Till next time, everyone. Hope okay. you enjoyed. Mm-hmm.